I want to highlight a couple characters from the Easter story today. Just take a couple moments and focus on two men who were insiders. They're often called secret disciples. One's Joseph, one's Nicodemus. Nicodemus we meet first in John chapter 3. Joseph we're introduced to in the crucifixion story. In Mark chapter 15, John chapter 19. Two secret disciples. They were insiders, right? They, they were men. They were Bible-believing, they were Jews, they were wealthy, they were prominent. And so by default, they are they're insiders. And Dick Demas, Nicodemus had the conversation with Jesus, one of the longer conversations in Scripture, uh, one-on-one with Jesus, and then he walks away. He doesn't become a follower, doesn't become a disciple at that time, but he continues to observe. He sees the miracles Jesus is performing. And at the crucifixion, after the crucifixion, Mark chapter 15, it was preparation day, and so as evening approached, Joseph of Arimathea, verse 43, a prominent member of the council, who was himself waiting for the kingdom of God, went boldly to Pilate and asked for Jesus' body. Following Jesus, the gospel gives us courage. There, there are times as you follow Jesus that you will need to exhibit courage, that you will need to be bold. And at the same time, Pilate was surprised to hear that he was already dead. Somebody in the centurion, he asked him if Jesus had already died. When he learned from the centurion that it was so, he gave the body to Joseph. So Joseph bought some linen cloth. He took down the body. He wrapped it in the linen and placed it in a tomb cut out of rock. Then he rolled a stone against the entrance of the tomb. Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Jesus, Joseph, saw where he was laid. In John chapter 19, it says, uh, he was accompanied by Nicodemus, the man who had earlier had visited Jesus at night. Nicodemus brought a mixture of myrrh and aloes, about 75 pounds. Think of 75 pounds of myrrh and aloe. Now, they did not embalm bodies back then. And so, typically, wrapping the body was reserved for slaves and servants. It was not a job of prominent members of society. It was not a job for insiders. Now, if you've been at Boulder Mountain, we know that God loves outsiders, but here we see two insiders. God also loves insiders. And what do they exhibit in this important, pivotal moment after the death of Jesus? These two men, secret disciples, they exhibit tremendous courage. They go boldly. And at the same time, they exhibit tenderness masculinity can all there's a place for tenderness within masculinity masculine and tender just like there within femininity there's a place for courage the gospel gives us both when was the last time you had to be courageous and tender at the same time i remember as a youth pastor i took a number of students on a missions trip we were serving in montego bay jamaica and on our free day we had one free day we were there 10 days. We went to the ocean and we went swimming. One of our students, a teenage girl, was being bitten by jellyfish. There were a tremendous number of jellyfish out and she was being bitten. She was screaming and yelling. And I'm thinking, I, I don't want to go out there. And so, uh, but I'm the youth pastor. So went out, got her, picked her up, carried her to, to the sand. I had to have courage to get her. I didn't want to get bit, so there was a, there was courage, and at the very same moment, I had to be tender, and we had to care for her and give her what she needed. Joseph and Nicodemus are being courageous and tender at the same time. They don't stand back with arms folded and hire others to do this. This is really, really important. The gospel changes culture. Those who are recipients of, of grace become an instrument of justice in the world. They now serve and they now care for Jesus. Tremendous amount of courage and tremendous amount of tenderness at the same time. So they didn't embalm bodies. So think about this experience. They're handling a cadaver, not any cadaver, but a body that's been stripped, the skin's been stripped off. There's holes in the back, there's holes in the side, there's holes in the hands, there's holes in the feet. There's, there's, this is a bloody job. And they pour 75 pounds of aloes and spices. And they're anointing this body and they're wrapping this body so tenderly. 
This is the man that he had a one out, Nicodemus had a one out, one conversation with. The gospel changes everything because Jesus changes every, everything. Uh, the, the high who are insiders, it, it, it brings humility to them. And outsiders who are already humble, it, it allows them to raise their head in tremendous courage and strength. And so Jesus is for the insider and Jesus is for the outsider. And all of us fall one of those two places or somewhere in between. And so if you need tenderness today, I pray that God would grant you tenderness. If you need courage, I pray that God would give you the courage and the boldness to do what he's asking you to do. Following Jesus, here we see an example of two men, prominent, wealthy men, insiders, say, no, this is our job. I want to be the one to sacrifice, to, to buy 75 pounds of aloe and, and oils, and, and I want to be the one to wrap, wrap the body. What is, what is Jesus calling you to do today? Let me pray. So, Father, on this, this week where we remember and we observe the sacrifice of Jesus and the resurrection of Jesus, we're all at different places in the story as we follow Jesus, but he is present with us. Whatever it is that you're asking us to do to follow Jesus, we pray that you would give us exactly what we need, whether that's courage or whether that's tenderness or whether that's both at the same time. I pray that you would move, you would grant new life this weekend at Boulder Mountain as we come together on Friday and we come back together on Sunday. And that, Jesus, you would, you would bring people to yourself. It's what you desire and what you long for. So we pray to that end.